All right, guys, I'm going to try to limit myself to no more than 15 minutes this time as opposed to the 40 minute tutorial from last night. But um, I'm just getting coffee in me. So let's see if this how this goes. All right. So this question asks, um, what were the details of employees whose combined earnings, salary and commission are greater than those of clerks? Um, I'm going over this problem because once again, it might seem like an easy solution. Um, but if you're not careful, you're going to get the wrong result. But let's start um, as we did before by trying to break this question into its component parts. So the first question is, um, well, uh, clerks, how much money do clerks earn? Um, and we're going to, yeah, let's leave the question like that. And then the next question that we need to be able to answer is, um, uh, what are the combined salary or combined earnings of employees? Okay, so those are the two pieces of information that we need to know in order to uh, answer this question. So let's figure out how much money uh, clerks earn. We're going to do select. Let's start with a select star again because it's just easy um, from EMP and again we'll alias it as E. Now our where clauses, we want to find clerk, so that's the description name, job, job. Let's see, where E dot job is equal to clerk. All right, let's take a quick look at that. So um, we have one, two, three, four clerks and they have a salary. So salary. Cool. Now let's do the first or next half of the question, which asks, um, what are the combined earnings of employees? Let me grab that and move that up here. And we're going to put that up here. So how much do employees earn? Select. I'm going to start with a star from MP E. Cool. Now to get combined earnings, we need to know, let's just pull E dot name. And I also need to show E dot sal, well, need to is a relative term, E dot sal and E dot earnings. Well, sorry. God, I'm still waking up. E dot commission. And then I'm going to create a column that combines salary and commission. Now in T SQL and Microsoft SQL, there's two ways of doing this. Um, if you go with the alias method that you've practiced down here, the way you do it is you say uh, database object and then alias. So in this case, we would write it as E dot sal plus E dot com. And we'll give it a name, so as um, combined earnings. Note here in this instance, when I give it the alias, it's not uh, appropriate to um, say E dot to suggest that it comes from the employee table because it really doesn't. Um, in SQL memory, um, we're making up a column, as it were, called combined earnings. It's not physically part of the employee table. So it would, again, not be appropriate to write it this way. Cool. So now we have that. Now let's create our WHERE clause. So our WHERE clause says combined earnings, so e.sal plus e.com is going to be greater than the result of this. OK, I'm not going to run this query. I'm going to ask you to think. Um, there's a couple reasons why this query is going to break. Oh, um, let's fix the obvious one. This should be in parentheses to suggest that we want to evaluate the combination of e.sal and e.com and compare it to the output of this. OK, so this is going to break, and it's going to break for a couple reasons. I think mo m the most obvious one I covered last night in great depth, hopefully, um, 
which is to say here I'm trying to compare e.sal to the result of this. Um, what is the result of this query? The result of this query is multiple lines. So it won't work. You cannot do this kind of subselect where you're comparing against multiple lines. Um, if you'll recall the Miller example, I said you could return just the salary of Miller, but it's more appropriate to build more robust code. I said you should do take the average of Miller. In our case, um, because the question asks display the uh, details of employees who whose combined earnings are greater than those of clerks, I'm going to assume that we can use the minimum salary that any clerk earns. You don't have to do an alias, uh, but you can. Um, so here, I'm just going to take the minimum salary, and by taking the minimum salary, now I only return one result, and this query should evaluate properly. Now, <clears throat> I hope you're asking, but Jay, because you took um, an aggregate function, in this case a minimum, and or up here because you have what appears to be an aggregation because you take one column plus another column, I hope you're asking, but shouldn't you have a group by clause? Um, and the answer is, well, no, you don't have to, in this case, have a group by clause. Let's think through how this query works. So remember, I said the first thing that we evaluate is the employee table. So it says, okay, find the entire employee table. No big deal. Then it says, filter um, where job is equal to clerk. Okay, fine. So now I go from, again, 50 records down to my seven clerks. And then I just say, take the minimum of the ESAL column. So in that instance, if that's your question, you don't need a group by clause. Now, if you said, for each job description, find the minimum salary. So if you said, I want to include um, e.job, so I want to see the minimum salary per job, then, in this instance, now you need a group by clause. Because we're saying, take my entire employee table, group it by salary, sorry, group it by job, and find the minimum value for each job. If you read the um, error message, it, it does say it. Employee job is invalid in your select because it's not contained in an aggregate, an aggregation, so it's not contained in a min, sum, max or it's not in the group by clause. So in order to have a column as part of your select where you have an aggregation function, you must include it in the group by. If I run this query, it looks very similar to the results I had before. So you're like, well, Jay, why did you waste our time? Um, if I take out my where clause, this is the minimum salary per job. which is still not what our original question wants. Um, so I'm going to go back to what we previously had. Take out my group by, take out the fact that I'm showing select. OK, so we're on the right track again. Um, one last thing before we continue. This is a semantics thing, or this is just a how you show your data. Um, for me personally, yes, you can put the alias after um, you declare the object that you're looking for. Um, I personally, especially as your uh, SQL queries get more dense, prefer to do it the other way around where I say, OK, I want to declare this column called minimal sale clerk, min sale clerk, and I want to assign to it the calculation dot, dot, dot. Um, and I would usually especially in an instance like this, I would do the same thing, where instead of saying e sal plus e com is called combined earnings, um, I would usually write this the other way around, 
and say combined earnings are equal to ESAL plus COB. Either method works, um, it just comes down to how can you make it um, more legible for yourself. Because I like to scan, you know, just the left side of the column and not read really, really long, dense code, this is why I prefer this option. Let's get to the answer anyway. <laughs> Jesus, J. All right, so 800. Good. I run my query. <clears throat> oh, I did it the wrong way. I did less than, I'm supposed to. No, yeah. What did I do wrong? Oh, I know what I did wrong. Okay, I got no results. I'm thinking, that's interesting. I should have some results. Somebody has to be earning more than the clerks. Let's take out that plus um, commission. I'm striking out, guys. Here's my query. I'm returning a result. I don't think the aliasing should be causing a problem, but just in case, where ESAL is greater than, that sign is backwards. Jesus. This is not good. All right, so now I get results. Whew. Sigh of relief. Um, and I'm actually going to put back in what it's supposed to be, which is esal plus e.com. OK, I still have results. OK, I'm looking at it. Yeah, these combined earnings are more than 800, so I must be right. Um, no, you're not. This answer is incorrect. Let's understand why. Firstly, let's show all the salaries. So I'm wondering, let's see if James shows up in this query when I roll the, run the whole thing. Because James earns 950, which is more than 800. And no, James is not in this list. Why is James not in this list? The reason why James is not in this list, or in order to understand why James is not in this list, you have to understand how SQL treats null values. By the way, that's why I picked this example, is how does SQL treat null values? Now, Oracle might do it differently, but T-SQL does something dastardly. Where, where did where did he go? Where did our friend go? Let's look at Smith. Smith is a perfect example. Smith's salary is 800. He has null commission. His combined earnings are null. And you're thinking, but shouldn't 800 plus null be 800? Well, um, yes, but technically null. Um, in order to believe that 800 plus null equals 800. Um, in order to believe that is true, you have to believe that null equals zero. And that is not true. And you're thinking, but J, it's obviously <laughs> null is zero. Well, no, it's not. Null means not applicable slash unknown. Put in the word unknown instead of null. So if I told you, well, your salary is 800 and your commission is unknown, is unknown the same as zero? The answer is obviously no. Unknown and zero are not the same. So you cannot assume that 800 plus unknown equals zero. Sorry, 800. So how do you accommodate for this? Um, there's a couple ways to handle um, replacing a value with something else. and um, one of the challenges, of course, is you always want to figure out what is the best way to get that job done. Well, in order to know the best way, you have to know all the ways. And I'm just going to say right now, it's too early in the morning to think about knowing all the ways to do something. So an option that we're going to explore, or the option that I'm going to use today, is called coalesce. So the coalesce function 
um, accepts multiple arguments, A, B, C, and it will keep the first argument that is not null. So if I had three columns, coalesce, uh, I can actually write it in. So if I write this function, coalesce e.sal e.com and zero, what this says is keep the first column in this list where the value is not zero. The end result, because my final argument is zero, is I should have no nulls, but I might keep salary or I might keep commission depending on which um, column is populated first. Let's just look at that. <clears throat> so in this case, Smith had 800 salary, null commission, coalesce returns 800. Um, in this case, the first column. I don't think I have any cases where the second column is populated first. Yeah, well, in any result, it's always, there's always a value here. That's the walk away. In terms of the execution of our um, query, what we should do is say salary is equal to coalesce e dot sal and zero. Commission is equal to coalesce. Ah, shit, I'm getting up to that 15 minute point e dot zero. Um, doesn't really matter if you have it here, it matters in combined earnings. Um, here you're going to say coalesce e dot sal comma zero plus coalesce e dot com comma zero and you're going to spell coalesce correctly. Okay, if you run this query <clears throat> you still get the same wrong result. <laughs> Remember Order of execution matters. What happens first? First, we do our from. Then, we apply the where clause. So in our where clause, this is where we're getting, um, where we're filtering the rows, and this is where it's breaking. This is just presentation. What does it look like? I just want it to look pretty. Um, this is where the error is happening. Here, coalesce. e.com and zero, and hopefully spell coalesce correctly, coalesce. And now I get a much longer row, and it is definitely correct. Okay, the too long don't read version of this webinar or this session was to ask or understand, how does SQL treat values? Arguably, we should also um, plus coalesce e dot com comma zero. Okay, arguably this is the most complete answer um, to your question, or most accurate anyway. Okay, moving on. Display details of employees whose grade is unique at the location that they work. This query involved the most joins, I think. Uh, so that's why I'm giving you this one. All right, what pieces of information do we need to know in order to answer this question? So the pieces of information that you need to know are for, for each location, uh, what is the count of grade? Um, in, and if this question doesn't make sense, um, I'll talk to you about what grade is in a moment. So first question we need to answer is for each location, what is the count of, let's say each grade. Okay, that's piece number one. Piece number two is which employees have um, 
Oh, do, 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 do. <laughs> For each location, what is the count of grade? Which of those grades have a count of one? Okay, that's a, that goes together. And which employees at that location have that grade? Okay, hope that's not too confusing. Let's do piece number one. For each location, what is the count of each grade? What piece of information do we need to know in order to have, answer this question? Well, we need to know grade, which is in the sal grade table. So we're going to do select star from sal grade. Um, and I'm going to alias it as SG. Let's take a quick look at this table. All right. So here, here are the grades, and depending on what salary you are, that determines what tax bracket you're in. <laughs> okay. So in order to relate this, well, what's in the department table? Let's take a quick look. Okay, here's a department table. So how do I get these two tables combined? You obviously have to go through the employee table. Select star from join to emp e on sg dot low sal is less than or equal to e dot sal and sg dot high sal is less than sorry greater than or equal to e dot sal. Um, cool. Let's run this query. One of the things that are going to trip you up um, as you get started in your adventures, especially if you don't really have a, the skill of visualizing what a data set and a table looks like and comparing it to the join on another table set, one of the things that's going to trip you up is this idea of um, explosive growth. Um, so. To illustrate that, I'm going to show what happens if your where if your join clause is not complete. So what happens if I only join on salary is less than or equal to low sal? Take a look at the row count now in my current query, and then we'll take a look at my row count now. My row count now is 40 rows. So I went from 40 to 40 rows just by forgetting to include an upper limit to the join on high sal. And why is that happening? What's happening is some employees are appearing in my data set twice. Let me add a quick order by clause so we can hopefully see that. So here I can see that this employee, employee sorry, lies, 7499, Alan, is being joined to the um, salary grade table twice. It's saying his salary grade are both 2 and 3 because the lower limit is filtered, but the upper limit is not. So E salary is less than 2,000 and it is less than 14,000 and that's why I have this row growth. And the same thing occurs for this salesman. Um, Ward, his salary is 12,050 um, and it is filtered to the low sal but it is not limited by the high sal. At the end of the day, the thing that you you know want to do when you run queries like this is you want to compare okay how many employees do i have in the employee table i have 14 employees cool after i do my join how many employees are returned i returned 40. oh shit. that means my join criteria is not correct cool beans once I put my join back in, uh, I'm down to 14. Cool. Let's do another join to the um, depth table on, ooh, alias it, on 
d dot depth number is equal to e dot depth number. Once again, when I run this query, I should only have 14 rows to say that there's a one to many, yeah, a one to many match between um, department number and um, this table. <clears throat> okay, speaking of, um, remember we were talking about the order that things are executed in, right? That's an integral part of understanding how your report works. In a similar way, it's important to understand, and it might seem obvious, your um, execution or your combination of table uh, is created in, in order, more or less, so from is calculated first, the results of join are calculated second, so I have table A, B, as it were, and then I'm taking table A, B, and joining it to C. It doesn't really matter if, in this instance, it doesn't matter if you filter on, um, if this were table A, this were table B, and this were table C. It doesn't matter if you do your join clause on A to B and then do A to C, or A to B and then B to C. It doesn't matter. What matters is that your count of rows ends up being the same. Let me put a caveat on it. Let me write this down. When you join tables, it doesn't matter if you join from A to B and then B to C, or if you go A to B and A to C. This doesn't matter unless, and this is the important part, unless you're If you're doing a left inner join, if you're doing a left or right join, the result could change. Um, we don't have any. Um, good examples in our work of a left or right join. So unfortunately, I can't demonstrate it, but um, put this in your back pocket. The walk away is your, your joins at this point in your SQL careers, your join order A to B, B, C, or A, B, A, C, do not really matter. It does, however, matter if you stop doing an inner join. By the way, all of the joins we've done so far are what's called an inner join. I'm not going to get into what is an inner join because that would just take too long. All right, where are we at in our query? So we're here. We have the master table. Cool. But the question we need to know is for each location, what is the count of each grade? So what I need to do is I need to do a group by clause because I need a group by location. Let's do group by location, which is called d.lock. OK, when you run this query, it breaks it breaks um, because you cannot include all columns in a group by clause. You have to explicitly list out the columns that you want to return. In our case, what happens if I do d.lock? I get two locations. I thought I had more locations. Oh no, New York and Chicago are my two locations. I was mistaken. Okay. Then I'm going to do a count star and I'm going to alias it, give it a name. Um, Jay, what question are you answering? What is the count of each grade? Oh, I need to do a, I also need to include um, sg.grade. Um, 
and now I can do my count. And what this tells me is it gives me the count of grade at each location. Uh, count grade equals. Again, you can get away with not aliasing your um, aggregations, but best practices says you should always give your columns names. If I run my query, it's going to break because I can't do an order by employee number. That column no longer exists in this uh, aggregated table. So I can, however, first group by, let's group by uh, location, d.location, followed by sg.grade. Let's review our results here. Let's make sure to include the select. Okay, so. Here are my results. Now, the initial question was, which of those grades have a count of one? Okay. You might be tempted to say where grade is equal to one. You might be tempted to do that, but hopefully you're not. <laughs> Because if I do that, I only get one row. Why did I only get one row? Because at this point of execution, I've made my master table of all of the employees and grades and departments. So I have my 40 row table. And then I said filter where the grade is equal to one. So what I'm left with is only the lowest paid employees. That's not what I want. What I want is I want for each location that where the count of each grade is one. Do you understand how that question is different than which employees are grade one? That's what this where clause is asking because it's taking my list of employees and filtering it by grade. What do we really want? I want you to point and you'd say, oh, no, I want to show, I want to return this column, this row rather, and I want to return these two rows because the count of grade is one. That aggregated number is one. And if you ever want to filter by an aggregated number, so basically after the data has been grouped, remember, you have to use the having clause. I want to filter the aggregated table where count star is equal to one. So now when I run this query, did I take out the where class? I did. Um, I get those three rows. So then the original question was, which of those employees, or sorry, where to go? Which employees at that location have that grade? So who are the employees at this location with this information? <clears throat> so that's the last dastardly piece of the puzzle. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a copy of this table. Select. Good Lord, Jay, what are you doing? Select star from SG, uh, what is it called? Sal grade. SG, inner join on MPE, filter on um, join on D dot depth number is equal to E dot depth number. Okay, so I have a copy of the original unfiltered table. And the question that I want to know is who are the employees in Chicago with a salary grade of one? Who are the employees in New York with a salary grade of, I can't remember, two, three, and four? What I'm going to do, um, or rather, what I cannot do is I cannot say where, um, S, I can't say where depth.depth number is equal to the results of this query. I cannot do that. And if you've been listening to anything I've talked about before, or in the first um, 
ver, uh, quest query, uh, you know that you can't do this because this SQL statement returns multiple rows. All right, this subselect returns multiple rows. Furthermore, it returns multiple columns. So I cannot filter department on the results of this subselect. Okay, what I can do is I can do another join. I can say, hey, instead of treating this as a um, as a subselect in a where clause, I could say, you know what? I'll call the result. Let's alias the result of this query as the table called res. Let's do an inner join to um, my master table of employees, and let's join on result dot location is equal to my master table, which is d dot location and res dot grade is equal to sg dot grade. Okay. Do I have my count stars one? Yeah, so do, do. I don't need to filter on count grade, right? Because my master table of employees doesn't know what the count of each grade is. I just want to see people in New York with grades two, four, and five. I run my query and Sorry, I run my query, and here are the employees with grades two, four, and five in New York. And of course, I only get one row for each grade because that was the question I set out to answer. Okay, um, I know this is starting to look long. I know it's starting to look scary, but it's not really that hard. What we had to do is we had to break down the question into its component parts. What piece of information do I need to answer or have an answer to in order to approach this query? So the first question that we answered was, um, for each location, what was the count of each grade? And we did that here. I'm just going to move it into a place so you can see it. I did that here. For each location, so when you hear for each, that implies some sort of a group by clause. Um, what is the count of grade? We did all of that rigmarole. And nothing here was terribly um, new or difficult. The only thing that you have to understand is what is the difference between using having as a filter versus what is the difference between using where as a filter. And the answer is, when you filter on the where, you limit the rows in your table. When you filter by the having clause, you filter the aggregation. You filter the aggregate of this group by. Cool. Um, from there, so that was the, uh, that was this element, which employees are, oops, sorry. From there, we went on to answer who are the employees at that location with that grade. So the first thing we had to set out to do was recreate a table that included employee location and sg.grade. We have to have a table object that combines all of those information, all of those pieces of information. So we did a um, you know, we just did a basic inner join on those three tables. No big deal. The last part was to say, okay, I have this table or this um, result set. How do I filter my master table on the result set? I explained that you cannot use a where to do that for two reasons. One, because your result set returns more than one row. That's one reason why you cannot do a where. The other reason why you can't do a where is because you need to filter by multiple columns 
in your result set. So the only answer then that makes sense is to say, okay, take my master table, this, and do a join to the result set. If you want to do a join to a result set, you always have to alias that object. Um, and a lot of times people will just alias as A. If you read code online, it's really common to see um, these tables alias as A. Cool. That was longer than 15 minutes. Sorry, but I hope you found it useful. <laughs> Catch you later. Bye.